Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Florida Buzz. So, the last video I did that should be uploaded sometime around now uh, was supposed to be a video on this intake. Well, I ended up talking so much about the guide plates and the push rods and the lifters and whatnot on the motor that I ended up kind of like stealing the thunder of this intake. So I kind of wanted to come back and do another little quick clip of this intake. There's really not much to it, but I just wanted to go over it in full. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and flip it up on its side. For some odd reason, there's one side of this intake, it's pretty cool, if I, uh, if I put it up on that side, it'll actually stay up on that side. Yep, it's that side. I lied. There we go. Jesus Christ, that scared the hell out of me. Must have been shaking or something. So anyways, here's the ports um, leading up to where you would normally bolt a carburetor on. This one's been drilled and had these blocks added to it for fuel injection. Uh, here's the adapter plate for the throttle body. But in all reality, what it really is is Dodge was smart, unlike Chevy with like the TBI systems. They actually made it so that their two-barrel throttle body bolts to a two-barrel um, uh, a two-barrel uh, carburetor like bracket. So here's the thing: theoretically, you don't really have to go with an intake like this because this intake was expensive, man. I said in the other video, if you can find one on eBay, I would definitely go that route. There are some some uh, advantages to this intake that I'll, I'll touch base on in a second, but for now, if you have the ability to drill and tap an intake, right, and you can get your hands on a two-barrel intake, dual plane or, uh, or single plane, whatever you're after, the main reason why I went after this intake is because it has really good cooling properties. Airflow just flows right through the bottom of it. And the operation range of this intake is 1,500 to 6,500 RPMs. That's, that's literally like spot on what I'm after. Plus it gets better fuel, uh, fuel mileage than the stock intake. It makes better horsepower than the stock intake for a Dodge Magnum 5.9. This intake, um, I can't verify it for sure, but I wanna get, show you guys an example. These are gaskets I bought, okay? I was gonna, I was gonna port match this intake. Not, not polish it for hours on end, but I was gonna, I was gonna at minimum gasket match it. When I get this gasket dead center, which is right there, let me see if I can, it's so hard to do this with one hand. Look at that. There's no material to take away. I mean, this gasket's not even dead center, look. When I center it just right, which it's hard to do with one hand, there's no gasket material to take away. I mean, what are you, what are you gonna do? Go in there and port, port you know, a, a cunt hair off the, the intake? It's retarded. So there's really no port matching to be done. There's no gasket matching to be done. This intake's top dog, man. By the way, this is a Hughes, Hughes Engines um, throttle body intake. It's, it's really an Edelbrock uh, RPM air gap, but they rebranded it, they drilled it. They, they sat down with Edelbrock and they designed this at the bench, which by the way, they did an amazing job on. So you get all your fittings, all your brackets, you get everything you need. The only thing you don't get with this full setup is a place to put your uh, your air intake temperature sensor. Normally, on the stock intake, there would be a hole in your in your uh, what would that be? That would be cylinder two runner. There's normally like so. Let's say this runner, the farthest runner. Normally, there's a hole in this one, and you would screw it in there. But the best thing to do with it is put it in your intake. So I'm going to take my intake cone or top hat, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to drill a hole in mine. And that's where I'm going to install mine, so it gets nice fresh air. It'll give you better tuning properties. You'll get a you'll get a more consistent um, air to fuel ratio, especially when you get hot. See, now normally when you put it in the intake, when the engine gets hot, that sensor gets affected by that, and it'll, it'll, uh, it'll choke out your fuel and all that, and you'll get a, 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 a crappier tune. This way, if you keep it in the air intake, it might get a little warm, but it's not enough to really have it start changing your air to fuel mixture like it normally does. So anyways, yeah, these are the ports, man. I mean, anything could use a polish. You know what I mean? Anybody... Any and everybody's standards are different on polishing. Let me see if I can turn my flashlight on. There we go. It's pretty fucking smooth, man. I mean, this is a good quality intake. You normally don't see intakes like this. There's the fuel injectors. And you see how they spray right into the cylinder, right into the top of the heads? That's for really good atomization, man. The stock injectors are actually, they, they, they come in like way up in that corner area I would say and they spray straight down you see how these spray at an angle and it's facing towards the head and again you see how smooth this material is 
like I said, to anybody's standards, you could always go smoother. But as far as casting flash standards, this is very, very decent. I mean, this is almost ideal. I would say, I would say you would take a fine five grit of sandpaper, and maybe go over it. But like I said, you really can't go over it too much because there's nothing to take away. Everything that you would take away has already been taken. I mean, like I said, there's like if you look right there, there's a little bit of casting flash right there. Very little bits here and there, but they did a very good job on this intake. They really did. Here's the other two ports. Like I said, it's there, but it's just so minimal. I mean, I've I've handled and played with thousands of different intakes, and let me tell you, man, this is one of the smoothest ones I've ever seen out of the box. I haven't done anything to this intake. And if you check this out, look, there's the inside of the intake. Go ahead and close that. All right, so next I'm gonna just give you guys an idea. I know they're taped up and I don't really wanna untape them, but these gasket ports and those gasket ports are ideally the same exact size. You really could not, as far as old school gas matching goes, you cannot do that with this intake. Well, I'll tell you back, if you have this intake and stock heads, you're probably gonna be porting and polishing your stock heads. But these are, Edelbrock 6177 uh, roller, that's the part number. Uh, they're roller heads that, sorry guys, I don't remember all that off the top of my head. But yeah, these are aluminum Edelbrock uh, heads. These are the RPM performer heads. And uh, they're, they're pretty much race heads, other than the bare block kit you would get. And then you could, you know, go ahead and, you know, put your own size valves in them, put your own seat cups in them, put your own valve seats in them. Uh, I mean, you can design those heads a lot further than you can design these, but <clears throat> these I think are a lot more affordable and best bang for your buck. For what I'm looking to do, these heads will do just fine. I don't really need to go above this. I'm only looking to make 550 horsepower at best, and then maybe uh, 520 foot-pounds of torque. I'm definitely going to hit the torque numbers. I know that. This is a 408 stroker, full force internals. It's definitely going to hit those numbers on torque. The horsepower is where the question might come into play. I might need to go with a bigger cam. I might need to go up a cam size, but I really hope I don't have to because the cam size I went with uh, that I touched base with in another video, it's it's perfect street size. It's the perfect size for the street. Like I said, there's one more stage I could have went above my cam and it would have put it into the 240s on duration at 50 on the exhaust. The intake would have still been in the 260s, but uh, yeah, I mean, guys, it's, this is a truck motor. It's not a race motor. I'm not looking to be the fastest guy on the planet. I just want it to hit the way it should, and I'm more than confident it's going to do that. So like I said, for now, this is my setup. Everything's also already done. We touched base with this on another video, but I got the oil pan on now. Timing cover's on now. The harmonic balancer's on now. The pulley's on now. I still got to torque this, but other than that, guys, I mean, we're, we're down to the wire. I got to set zero lash on these. And then I gotta put the preload on them. I'm probably gonna make a video on that. <clears throat> I gotta put these valve covers on, put the gaskets on, torque them down. I got all new hardware sitting right there in that bag. Make a video on that. Then we're gonna go over the ignition system, and then I'm gonna install that with the spark plugs and uh, the headers. And that's it, guys. That's that's the end of this uh, 408 Forge internal stroker uh, saga. That's the end of it. All right, guys. Catch you guys later.